Hi, uh, I'm Paul Smitherman, and uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview of my area of research, uh, which is geostatistics. Uh, when we talk about geostatistics, uh, we're also talking about a field known as spatial data analysis. Uh, this is a field of research, a uh, branch of statistics, which deals with data which has a spatial and or a temporal component or a time component. Um, just a little history. Geostatistics was originally developed in the 1960s and 1970s uh, to help estimate and predict probable distributions in the geology and mining industries, uh, particularly for uh, petroleum research uh, in finding oil. But uh, as with so many things in science, um, it's currently widely used today in many uh, fields of research uh, in spatial information science. So we've got epidemiology, planning and logistics, and risk, risk analysis are just a few of the uh, the areas of research that we're uh, applying geostatistics to these days. Um, so I'll give you a little example here, um, and this is uh, for right from the mining industry. Uh, suppose a geologist is looking for a certain mineral in an area, say a hundred uh, square kilometer area, uh, but they only have the resources to obtain a very sparse number of, number of samples in this region. Um, uh, typically in geology and, and mining, uh, taking samples is very expensive and resource intensive. So uh, here you can see on the left, uh, perhaps these are the samples that were taken in the area. Uh, the red colors will indicate a, a high concentration of the mineral that we're interested in, and the blue area will uh, indicates a low concentration of the mineral. Uh, and we only had the resources to, say, drill six sample uh, locations. Um, we can ten, then take the data from those six sample locations and by using a process known as Krieging, uh, estimate the distribution of the mineral in the entire region. Here on the right you can see we've used Krieging to uh, estimate the distribution of the mineral in, the, re in the, the entire region. You can see now that we have contours of estimated mineral concentration, the blue, the dark blue being low and the yellow and red being higher concentrations. Here's an example from my own research. Uh, I've been involved in quite a while uh, with uh, radon in drinking water and in the air. Um, this is a, a slide from my own particular research. Um, here we have uh, the Greater Augusta, Maine area divided into regions of geology. You can see the GS, E, A, A. Those are metamorphic grade regions of, uh, of the bedrock and also uh, these areas with the uh, horizontal lines are the granite formations. Um, the white dots are the locations of wells that were sampled for radon in private drinking water. And then um, I've taken those data points, there's about 1,100 of them, and created an estimate map of the radon concentration in this area. And you can see the darker contours re represent higher estimates of radon in drinking water and the lighter areas are lower uh, estimates. And you can see, which is kind of interesting, we know that radon typically follows granite, and you can kind of see from the estimate that the, uh, that the radon concentrations are following these granite formations. Uh, Krieging isn't the end of the story, though. Uh, here we see from the last slide, these are the Krieging estimates. Um, the highest values in this uh, slide are the actual data whereas the lower values you see are the Krieging estimates. And you can see here that the, while the Krieging is predicting the general trend of the data, it's actually underestimating the values. So uh, finding solutions to a problem like this is one focus of my ongoing research in geostatistics. And here's some current trends, just real quick. Uh, some of the newer types of research in this area are Bayesian and probabilistic networks and another field known as Bayesian maximum entropy. These are all exciting new areas of research in geostatistics. Thank you.